afternoon. Oh, okay. My name is Justin Snyder and I'll be your moderator for this afternoon's class. Welcome to another lecture presented by the Art Poor class. Now, this is a school and is not a church, neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our element and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in 1958. And since that time, we've established branch schools throughout the continental US, Canada, Jamaica, Zambia, Africa, Malaysia, and certain other foreign countries. The airport branch was established in the year 2000. At this time, we'd like to introduce the Dean of the airport branch, Dr. Bonnie Snyder. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name for the Father, the title for the Word of Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit that are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted by the title God. And the true name of the Holy Spirit, whether manifested in or out of the physical body, is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with the name Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles, and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 5 that there are lords many and there are gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That is, Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Greek, the Hebrew, or Latin languages have any letters or characters in their languages that can produce the sound that's made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death on the cross. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true name of the Father and His Son. Now, Christ is a title, just like Lord God. <clears throat> now, Yahweh is spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, and he is inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh on this cloud symbolized, or on this <laughs> chart symbolized as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have this cloud illustrated all the way around the outside of this chart to show that everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Now, later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body as Yahshua Messiah and walked the earth plane, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of these name, this name and title can be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Now, also in this school, we teach by the divine tabernacle pattern. It's called the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop of Mount Sinai, and he gave him this threefold tabernacle pattern and a vision. He instructed Moses to build one exactly as he had seen in the vision down in the wilderness. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In the school, we show proof of how that everything in the universe is made and does operate according to the structure and functioning of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Also in the school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. 
First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our LM, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua and Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand Yahweh's eternal purpose operating through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations in time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation or faith that was once delivered to the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh ordained from the beginning there is no other name given among men where we can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. <clears throat> our slogan is to speak the truth and our watcher is peace. At this time, I'd like to have the class uh, dedicated to prayer uh, by Zachary Taggart. And um, the scripture reading is Romans, the 10th chapter, and Hebrews, 11th chapter, 1 through 6. Um, Allison, can you read that for us? Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, class. Uh, let's bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, that we're able to gather again in his name and learn about his purpose, pattern, and plan. And we ask him that he might uh, quell any waters, turbulent waters within us, or move any mountains, and uh, just help us to focus on, uh, on this class so we might learn something new about his purpose, pattern, and plan. And uh, ask him to uh, help us to remember um, that Yahweh is to be still and uh, really realize that Yahweh is ever present constantly. And uh, with that, let's all say hallelujah. I will be reading from a Holy Name Bible and containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. We are going to start with Romans, the 10th chapter. I can fix it. Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they may be, or they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. For the Messiah is the end of the sacrificial law for the obtaining of the righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh, speaketh on the wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Messiah down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith that we preach, that if thou shalt confess with their mouth that Yahshua is the Messiah and shall believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture hath said, or the scripture saith, Whoever so believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew or the Greek, 
For the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. How then shall they call unto him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preacheth the gospel of peace and bring the gospel of good things. But they have not all obeyed the evangel or the Messiah. Is that supposed to be the Messiah? The gospel? Okay. Sorry. That's, I want to get it right. <laughs> Holy name version sometimes. For Isaiah saith unto Yahweh, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I did, or but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by an enlightened nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found by them that sought me not, and I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. And he saith to Israel, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto the disobedient and gainsaying people. That's Romans 10. And Ephesians. Oh, Hebrews. I like this one. <laughs> Even better. No, I'm just kidding. I like Ephesians too. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the ages were ordained by the word of Elohim, so that things which were not in evidence are now seen coming to pass. By faith Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Yahweh testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased Yahweh. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Good afternoon once again. I'd like to welcome everyone to class this morning, or this afternoon. And um, I just want to extend a warm welcome to our guests from Buffalo, the Lattimore family, um, and everyone else, of course. That's because we really are one big family down here. And uh, for our first, first speaker, I'd like to call upon Nick Ledmore. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So this is a microphone, that's a camera, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and that thing's sensitive, so just be aware of around it. It's... Okay, don't need to talk right directly. <laughs> gotcha. uh, this is awesome. Um, this is like the third class I've got to go to in a year, all of us really. It's, uh, just getting together with Mary Ann and Mike and, you know, actually putting the charts up again, it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's a famine, you know? Um, oh, so it's been a while since I actually got up on the floor and had like a lesson. So I don't have any lesson plan or anything like that, but I, I mean, there's just things going through my mind just, so I might kind of bounce around a little bit. Um, and I just hope that somebody gets something out of it because, um, uh, we know, we're here to obtain salvation and we come to find out in the school that you obtain that through knowledge. Um, if we, can we get that verse, please? John 17. Yeah, one, please. And, and then after that, get the beginning of our, uh, Hebrews 11, one and six, two again. John 17, one. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, 
Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, mm -hmm. as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Mm -hmm. And this is life eternal. And this is life eternal. Something we our ears should poke up, perk up. I mean, we us now being in school for a while now, but like years ago, if you heard that, you, you should be like, whoa, okay, I need to hear this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> and this is life eternal. That they might know thee. No. The only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah, whom thou hast sent. And Yahshua Messiah. So, not to go the whole way on that route, but um, no, no is an intimate understanding. Mm -hmm. So, you, and like we've said many a time in this school, you know, um, the first thing you want to know if you want to know someone is you got to know their name. And if you come to find out that that person's name is not what you told was told it was for a long time, you're going to start asking yourself, what else don't I know about this person? Um, so that's what I'm hoping is if me bouncing around here a little bit and uh, inspire somebody or somebody gets that little bit of knowledge and uh, like I said in the prayer there, you know, to get that little bit of knowledge or, or learn something new. And I want to just say that it, it's, there's nothing new with Yahweh, but none of us know everything. So we all learn something new. <laughs> um, and you know, really, I want to say this real quick. Is this accurate now? <laughs> Inflation is wrong. <laughs> I remember it was one of the first things I ever learned in, in school. It was like a buck ninety-eight, I think it was, is what the old ones said. And I think it went up a little bit then. And uh, it's the first time I've seen one. What doesn't say a dollar ninety-eight anymore? I was like a five ninety-eight. So it's, <laughs> it's the first time I noticed that. Um, and it made me think a little bit. Boy, yeah. Uh, Judas got a pretty good deal for a third piece of silver. It's just a body, right? Just for just a body, you know. Because yeah. that's what this is. It's a price thing on what your what your flesh is actually worth. That's what that means. Or if anybody didn't know that, that's like the certain minerals and, and things you have in yeah. your body, the actual monetary value of what this flesh right. is. Right. Is what that is what that's there for. So um, it's really it's what we're trying to say is it's not worth nothing. <laughs> it's it's what, what's inside. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, this has been a, a quite a year for everyone. And, um, I talked to Marianne a little bit about it and the, the zoom meetings for me personally, and, the, and, and, um, uh, the YouTube and whatnot, I, don't get me wrong. It's great. If we didn't have nothing, it would be horrible. But for me personally, it's, I, I have a hard time being focused, mm -hmm. like coming and sitting down in a class in a lecture, now I come in, I got my book open. I don't have anything else going on around me. And it, and like Dr. Henley said, is come to class, be on time, you have to love the brethren. And you, 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 that's not where I was going. I wanted to go where, uh, when you're studying about Yahweh, is you want a quiet place and a comfortable place with mm -hmm. very few distractions so you can focus on Yahshua. And I have a tough time with that at home and in the vehicle. And, you know, I, I try and, there's so much available, you can put earbuds in and put my headphones on and mow lawns, and that's great. It's better than anything else, but I'm not getting the full effect of sitting down in a physical lecture. Um, the kids, this generation is able, they're, they're, they're able to do it a little. They're learning it faster than we are because they're doing it with school, too. Um, but this, what I'm getting at there is this is what I really miss, and this is great. Um, it's It's... It's great. I, I mentioned it to Marianne too. I said it's kind of like the way class with me to put it in this perspective is uh it's like white bread. That's what I said. It's like white bread. It, there's there's kind of some substance there, but it's 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 not you can you can sustain life on white bread, but it's not good. It's not it's not wholesome. It's not, you know, there's all kinds of principles about physical food compared to spiritual food and the the famine of like how how poorly our physical food is out there this day and age um, compared to a, a whole grain wheat and organic and things like that compared to processed foods. It's essentially the gospel compared to loosely like the Catholic church or the churches out there because there's really no substance in, in what they have out there at all. Um, so to sit down and have a good meal with a bunch of brothers is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, what, what's, what separates this school 
from anything else out there in the world is this pattern right here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's by this pattern by which all things are made and how Yahweh operates the whole way down. And we, we know this through ages and dispensations. It's every death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, 40. Um, line upon line, precept upon precept. And it's just infallible. And it, it's all because it's all going according to a simple threefold pattern. That the world out there, and where, where did I go that way? I think I just got lost this morning. And it's the gospel tabernacle or something. Oh, went left. Yeah, went down. There's a gospel tabernacle down there. And there's different tabernacle churches of this, the tabernacle churches. And if you ask these people what a tabernacle is, they really don't even know what it is. I remember asking somebody about that one time in, in, uh, in the Catholic church. It's that box behind the priest where they keep God in. That's what was an answer I got with them. That's where God lives in that box behind the priest. Well, but there's so much more to that. And we, and that's what is so incredibly fortunate for each and every one of us in here is to be able to see how everything in the universe goes according to that pattern. There's no escaping it. There's no escaping it. So you have no excuse either. Um, you have no excuse to, um, you, you, you're able to discern false doctrine that's going on out there through this tabernacle pattern. Um, because if it's not according to this pattern, let's say if Yahweh, law and prophets, you can prove that it's not being taught correctly. And that's what's going on in this school. Um, actually, let's get Acts 4. Um, is what's going on in the school is people are, they, they want you to believe for what, not in this particular, but in the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. <clears throat> They're teaching things that they can't prove. And Doc Kenley got up on the floor and said that you're going uh, to, get up here on the floor and teach things you can't prove. And sure enough, everything that Doc Kinley ever predicted or anything he ever said always came to pass, and here it is coming to pass. Um, you know, he, he actually said, you know, right there in L.A., I believe it was, um, there's people on this, in this room that are going to get up on this floor and teach things that they can't prove. And it's happening. Can we get that? X4, I'll start at 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, mm -hmm. if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man. The good deed. So they, they healed the impotent man. He didn't have any money. I, this, has been, this has been brought up quite often in a lot of classes I've been seeing lately, but it's always on my mind too. Um, so the impotent man, he, he was begging for alms, and they didn't have alms to give him, but they said, hey, we got, we got something better. We got Yahshua. And uh, they healed the impotent man. He stood up and walked, and it was... Couldn't deny it. Everybody, everybody in the whole city saw it. Go ahead. By what means he is made whole, mm -hmm. be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, mm -hmm. that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah mm -hmm. of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, yeah. whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Yeah, so they can't, can't deny it. It was Yahshua that did it. And then what did the Pharisees say again? I'll say about it. Uh, you want me to jump down? Yeah. Uh, Indeed, there's a notable miracle done. Or is it? Yeah. Um, all right, 16. Saying, what shall we do to these men? Well, first of all, what do you, why do you even say that? What do you do? do don't do nothing to them. They just, they just made, did a miracle. <laughs> but it's because it's threatening their power. Go ahead. For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done mm -hmm. by them is manifest to all of them that dwelleth in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But that it spread Can't no further it. among the people. Can't deny it. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And no, you don't, you can't use Joshua no more. And they see it right. That ain't, that's not going to happen. And that's what I'm going to say if somebody says that to me. Because what I said to you, we were on the phone last week. I said, uh, uh, if they, if they want to try and take our charts away from my son, I'll go to Charlton Heston on them. And uh, I'll have to fry it with my cold, dead hands <laughs> in my charts. <laughs> 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 Um, but that's what's going on in this school, and they're straightly threatening us to no longer teach, literally in the name of Yahshua, because they've reverted back, not back, they teach, they're trying to teach and prove, or teach in the name of Dr. Kinley, and um, they can't deny that there's been a notable miracle done amongst the brethren. I mean, we see people raised from the dead. All the time <laughs> um 
and they can't deny it, but they but they're straightly threatening us because I, I guess it's threatening their power because we're not heeding to a man because we're not giving credit to a group of physical people. So they're threatening us to no longer teach in this name. Um, I don't know. I, I, I got I got a billion things going through my mind. I can't sit here and just teach it, teach a lesson. I'm very excited to be here. Um, and I'm really looking forward to just listening to other brethren and, and whatnot. And it's really good to, I, I'm sorry it's taken us so long to get here. <laughs> and we're we're going to see more of this. All right. Praise Joshua for everything. Thank you guys for having a class for us today. Looking forward to hearing the next couple speakers. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, I'll be the next speaker. Um, something that he, uh, he was talking to, it brought something to uh, my remembrance. Um, let's go over to Matthew, uh, I think it's 8 and 8. <clears throat> He was yeah. talking about how you go to, um, you want to go to a, a quiet place here. Now, <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church in particular, they've got this, they took this verse and they done twisted this one up good. Okay. What Bible do you want to run out of? Doesn't matter. Matthew 8 and 8. Mm -hmm. uh, the centurion answered and said. No, that's not it. I'm sorry. Matthew 6 and 6. I'm sorry. All right. Matthew so go the, go in, your, in the closets. Oh, so yeah. Matthew 6, yep, this is it. All right, sorry about that. I just looked it up, so it wasn't. <laughs> Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy room. Okay, now is this, this is, if they've got a red letter edition, this is Yahshua the Messiah talking. Okay, go ahead. So he's saying, when you, when you thou prayest, read. Enter into thy room. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast shut thy door, okay. So he, it is a little different in here. He had enter into thy into thy room in a in a, a holy name version. King James version would say, "Enter thy into thy closet." Okay, go ahead. And you can keep reading. Wow, now it's going to get to the King James version. I think it'll probably be right. basically the same beside that. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and mm -hmm. when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Okay. So he's saying to enter into thy closet. Now, does this mean to find the quietest closet in your house and to enter into that? No, it's talking about to get yourself in a state of calm, to, to, to reflect within yourself, because that's right where the father dwelleth. Mm -hmm. You see? He's right within you teaching, because he's the teacher down here. That's the Holy Spirit. Let's get... Um, John 14, 26. Okay, so anyways, I was thinking of this because I was thinking about the Roman Catholic Church and the way that they twisted these things up. They've got the Holy Father there, your priest, your, you know, your, the minister, the cardinal, whoever it is that happens to be, and they want you to confess, confess your sins to them, and he's in a, his little closet there. You go into the confessional. And you know, you sit, and I've only seen it like portrayed in movies and stuff like that. But I get a pretty good idea from that of what it's all about. You go in and you confess your sins. And Marianne has a, a, an interesting testimony that goes along with this. She, if you didn't have a sin, you felt like you were guilty of something, so you came up with something. Yeah. So then you were lying on top of that. So the whole thing, yeah. it was just the mystery of iniquity by denying that Yahshua would come in and fulfill these right. old carnal ways of worship that were given to the Jews and the Jews only. See, in this dragon, he's dragged them over onto this side of the cross. You see where they ought not be, and that's really the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke about, Daniel's prophecy. Mm -hmm. You can read about that. Yeah. Okay? And the reason is, is because the, the, this is an abomination because it's denying what Yahshua the Messiah has done for you, for everyone, and it's calling him, outwardly calling him a liar. Saying that he came in to institute something instead of fulfill. He, the exact opposite of what he came in to do, which was to end this. To end this physical way of worship that was given to the Israelites, you see? Okay, go ahead and read. John, John 14, 14 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. See, the, we, down here, we would have a true, we can obtain a true comfort through, mm -hmm. through Yahshua, who is the Comforter. Okay, read. 
whom the Father will send in my name. See, now here's your access to the Father. Now you've got a guy there over in Rome who's saying that he, he they used to wear a hat, and we've got it right on our charts, and the reason that he took the hat off was because of this school. Yeah. And you can check that out. That's history, you see? You can check these things out for yourself. But on his head, he used to wear this head that said vicarious feli di, which means basically God's representative on earth, you see? And he still says that. He just happened to take his crown off and he took his, his hat off. But they still call themselves that, you see? And so you've got him acting as a sort of an intercessor because he's, he's God's representative on earth. Yeah. And yet you're, gonna, you're never going to read in your Bible anywhere where you've had a man that you needed as a, an intercessor besides back in the law, you see, where Moses served as, a, as a, an example of an intercession between the people and man, you see. So they're picking up those, those old ways of worship that the Messiah nailed to his cross and trying to, and they've just distorted the thing greatly. You see? Okay? All right. But we have the comforter down here. And see, that's that's your only intercessor unto the Father. And you see, this right here is an illustration of, of Yahshua making intercession for the people, you see, yeah. unto Yahweh. You see? And that comes right out of your pattern. Just like he said, that everything goes by this pattern. So if, if you want to check something in your Bible, you put it to the pattern. And here, the priest offered up intercession here at this altar. All right? And so as it lines up right here, and, and maybe we can get into this a little bit, but this is in fulfillment of those things. That's what he was doing here. He was, it was done in fulfillment here. Okay, go ahead and finish up the comfort because I got to, my mind's going a lot of places too here. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. He's going to, is he going to teach you a few things? All. <laughs> There's a difference between a, a little bit and all, all things. You're not going to get it from a man. If you're going to get any knowledge and understanding of your heavenly father, you see, the creator, it's got to come by Yahshua. He's the comforter. He's the teacher. Go Keep reading. Whatsoever I have said unto you. You see, and those things that Yahshua has said unto you. See, so so now you take that and and you, you want to go into your closet, you see, or your room. Room works, too. You can use room closet. I don't it's just an, a physical example of getting into a, a place of your own, you see, where you have that intercessor in you. He's your access unto the Father. Not some man at a, church, at a physical church, you see. That, that's, that's really twisting things up, okay? Keep reading there. Peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. My peace I give unto you. Yep. Not as the world giveth. See, now this is, this is just unbelievable because, you know, everybody wants peace on earth, you see. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having peace on earth, but they, they done missed the boat when Yahshua was saying that he's peace. Yeah. See, when he when that Holy Spirit is in that physical body and he's walking around on earth, that's peace on earth. That's right. That's that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what's going to give you some peace of mind. You see, that's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And that's the only thing that's going to give you any rest right. down here. You see, not thinking that. <laughs> The Jews and the Muslims are going to get along and they're going to say, well, you know, you guys just take this little piece and we'll take this little piece and it's cool. It's not It's not the way it's going to be. That's right. Because you can see it's a carnal mind. They think that there's something about that holy land over there that's worth killing and fighting for. But what's, what's worth dying for and what's worth giving up your life, and I'm not talking about physically so, I'm talking about giving up the way that you thought you ought to live that, you know, I used to have the Opinion that life was all about having fun. <laughs> it's been a hard one to drop. <laughs> and, and you know what? <laughs> People have all kinds of crazy different opinions about what life is about. Obtain, uh, the, probably the strongest one in our society is obtaining stuff, money, goods. Yeah. That you, 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 you spend a whole lifetime of acquiring massive amounts of wealth and for what? You can't take it with you. The pharaohs used to think you did. They had traditions where they wanted to be buried with all their stuff to the point where if they had someone they loved enough for a pet, they killed them and buried it with them because they thought they could take it to the afterlife. Now, that's about the same carnal mind that's been working all the way down through. It doesn't matter how much stuff you acquire, you can't take it with you. You know, and then the <clears throat> Yahshua talks about in a parable with the rich man and the poor man. 
you see? And there was a great gulf fix between them after they died. One was carried onto Abraham's bosom. That was the poor man and the rich man. He was buried, yeah. you see? And between us and them, there's a great gulf fix. And that comes right out of your pattern. There was a great gulf fix between what happened with the Israelites. They were carried up through there, or he bore them on eagle's wings. And those Egyptians, they were buried. They yeah, sank right. as a stone, you see? There's a big difference, you see? Okay, um, let's go over to uh, Romans 10. Um, pick it up at, I don't know, 7-ish. Romans 10, 7-ish. <laughs> 7. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Yahshua. Well, you have, to go, you have to go to 6. Sorry. Okay. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh unto the wise. Now this this is the the right not this isn't the righteousness that was of the law back there. And this is one place where you, you should investigate what what um is in the, the difference between the holy name version and the um the King James version there because A.V. Trana, he being a Jew, he stuck in ceremonial law in there. That wasn't it, that's not the way it was in there. It should just be the law, and the law is is spoken of is this old command, this old testament that was given to the Jews back here. Simple as that. But anyways, I digress. Read. Well, I'm reading out of the That's fine. Of King James, just yeah. I just that was that was just because when you read it this morning, you talked it, it said that of oh, the I'm ceremonial sure. law. Oh, okay. He added that ceremonial in there. Yeah. Okay, read. Okay. Um just for Moses, no, I'm, I'm in the wrong spot. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Now saith, this is the righteousness we're interested in here. The righteousness of is that is of faith speaketh on this wise. Read. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Yahshua down from above. Now who would be able to ascend into heaven to bring Yahshua down? read or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring yahshua again from the dead up again from the dead right likewise you don't need your physical minister he he doesn't have the ability to do these things yahshua has done the work on his own when he got up here and he said that these things this was finished you see it was that righteousness of the law was fulfilled in the things that he did he was the one that they instituted the thing back there with Israel, and he was the one that was able to fulfill it here. So <clears throat> the righteousness that was of this law, you see, he brought that to the end. And, and it was the righteousness if they could keep it. That was a big if. Because no, none of them were able to keep it. Right. Read. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth mm -hmm. and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach right this this is what should be in your heart and in your mind read that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and this is a this is a, a <laughs> this is a big part of it if you want a confession you know i was working on a confession there for the, the holy father this is the this is the the fruits of your lips that he wants to hear read that this is the offering that you can offer up now. Because there is a spiritual reflection of these, these things that were back here. These were types. They were shadows. They were an allegory, you see. This was a schoolmaster that was that was supposed to bring you unto the Messiah. But once the Messiah has come and you have confessed, you see, read, I'm jumping to it, but we're no longer under the schoolmaster. Okay, read. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Yahshua is the Messiah, and shall believe on thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's, it's just that simple. Believe in Yahshua. And it's not a blind faith. He's going to go on, and that's that's when you go over to Hebrews, is to, to look at what faith is. Faith has some substance. It's a substance of things hoped for. There's a greater hope than going around in this flesh. But I'm only 40 years old. 
I say only because I used to think, man, if I ever make the 50, it's going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like I'm starting to just get a, a small view. I can't imagine what it's be like in your 90s, what you got to feel like. My, my uncle's going to be 90, I think, this year. And he's kept awful good care of himself as far as physically goes. He's just a no nonsense kind of guy. You know, he's lived what we'd consider a, a straight, the straight and narrow yeah. physically. So, see, <laughs> but he's hurting. It's breaking down. Yeah. His, his eyesight's failing him. He can't jump off the tractor anymore. His, he's aching. It's, it's temporary. Yeah. It's, it's just like this was temporary. This is showing you that it's something temporary. You see? And what Yahweh's concerned with is what's within the man. You see? That's why he can say things that how how beautiful or how wonderful are the feet that mm -hmm. preach the glad tidings or the gospel. Is he talking about how beautiful someone's feet are? I don't care how many pedicures you get. They ain't that beautiful. <laughs> in, in fact, I have a sister-in-law. I don't care how clean your feet are, how nice they are. She's disgusted by them. She has a foot thing. Yeah. You know, some people have a foot fetish or they really like them. But she has a foot aversion. She just don't like feet. Don't get them near. You see? But that's not what it's talking about. You have a soul on your foot. That's what it's talking about. And you know what the, the greatest, one of the greatest witness on your body is? You have a heel. So it doesn't matter how dirty you think your little feet are. You you have a and you have a healer. <laughs> you got Yahshua, and he's put right on you that your soul can be healed. You can be healed. Okay. Read. For the scripture saith. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Right, read. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. See, he has broken down that middle wall of partition, you see, by the by the offering of his, his especially prepared body, you see. He, he took the sin of the world and put it on that, that blush. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh to, to <clears throat> take away those things, you see. Read. For the same Yahweh over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Mm -hmm. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. And Nick went over there to Acts, and that's just a powerful witness that how that, that man, he was lame from birth, begging alms at the temple gate, you see. And it talks about it. He didn't just rise up and walk. He was jumping. Mm -hmm. He went from being lame his whole life to jumping and shouting and, and praising Yahweh. You see? And that's what's going on inside of us. Mm -hmm. We come in here, DOA, as the founder would say, sick and lame and not even knowing it, ignorant of, of our creator. You see? We inherited this death from our father Adam, which was to be separated from our creator. You see? But you see, through, <clears throat> through the process, you see, of this gospel for Yahshua going through his death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures or in agreement to the things that were written aforetime of him, you see, he has made a, a new and better way by this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you see. Now you've, now you've got that intercessor to the Father. Right. You see, on a permanent basis, you had little lights, as it were. Those, the Moses and the prophets back there, you see, you, see, you have an example of the sun, moon, and stars put in the heavens, you see? And the moon and the stars are of the, they're, they're um, examples back there of, of the prophets and the, the law that was given back there, okay? And those stars are pretty glorious in their own little way, and they're as of little lights through the night of the purpose. See, what you had here is you've got, and they even call this, you know, you've got areas in time that are called the dark ages and, and stuff like that. See, and it's funny because Rohan is the one that pointed out that a lot of times that they were calling it the Dark Ages because it was dark men that were in charge to a lot of this time. And that's it's just that's just the way that it was. There was a lot of time where it, those African nations were powerful back there and they were ruling. Okay. And um, so, anyways, you had the in principle, you had the night of the purpose through here until the day star comes in. That's Yahshua, you see. And now you have an art on uh, uh, an opportunity for that day star to arise in you. See, so now you're in the light of the thing, all right? But those prophets, they were given the Holy Spirit on a temporary basis, and that it's showing an example of those little lights or those stars through the night of it, okay? Anyways, read. How then shall they call on him 
in whom they have not believed. Now, how can you call on him whom thou have not believed? And this is something that goes on in the world in abundance. Mm -hmm. I'd had a guy call me last night. This is the most random. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting about three calls a day for extended warranties yeah. and yeah. student yeah. loan forgiveness. And I, cars I don't have in student loan debts I never had. <laughs> it's just like, where does this stuff come from? But I had, so I had this random call last night from a number somewhere out of Rochester. And it was a younger gentleman that asked if I, he could pray with me. And I was like, I said, who are we praying to? <laughs> Let's get into it here a little bit. And really, he, I don't think he said too much after that, but he did listen. I mean, I was probably on the phone with him for 20 minutes or so. But uh, <laughs> I mean, he didn't know what he was getting into. But, but it's, job, but it's, but that it was a pertinent question, you know. Like, and and I, I started right off with with going right back here to Exodus. Moses had the sense enough to say that when I go under the children of Israel, they're going to know but who sent me. What name? Yeah. And so read that again. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And he started off with a name. The One of the first things you do oh. when you're introduced to someone is you find out what their name is. That's right. so you might have went your whole life believing in that there was something greater than yourself or a God, you see. But you come down to this school and you realize that there's only one true element. There's only one Father. There's only one Holy Spirit. And these three are one. That's one universal spirit in two different manifestations for the, the, for the purpose of salvation, by the way. And that's wrapped up right within his name. That Yahweh himself come right down for salvation. You see? And so one of the first things that we try to do down here is to introduce people to the Heavenly Father's name. And it's not just any name. This is a name above all names. And that's why he gave Yahshua, you see, the name above all names. And the reason is, is because wrap right up in that. We, I'm probably going to have to, uh, I'm going to just go through it real quick. When, when he appears to Moses in the burning bush, he gives him a description of his name, which is Aya Asher Aya. Now, King David Version has put I am that I am in there. That don't mean nothing. I can say that. You can say it. Anybody can say that. But Aya Asher Aya means that I will be what I will to be in simplicity. It really means that. I, I was there, I was here, I, I would, I'm everywhere, I'm everything. I am the all in all. That's what you're dealing with here, Moses. There, besides me, there is no other. There is no other, you see? Besides me, there is no savior. Besides me, there is no creator. Any, <laughs> any of the big labels you want to put on there, that's who he is. But that's what was in, in the original text was Aya, Asher, Aya. You see, it has that name of God right within there. But the name Yahweh means that he who who is and causes to exist. You see, that that's, you can't put that on any, on any other thing. That's right. You see, it's a powerful name. Not only that, but David picks it up in the Psalms 150 and 6, the very last Psalms, that let everything that has breath, breath praise Yahweh. Praise the Yahweh. Hallelujah. I brought that out so the, the guy said, don't you say hallelujah? You know what that means? And they, they put, they stuck a J in there. They should be saying hallelujah. That's right. But it isn't. It's hallelujah. Yeah. Because it's praise be to Yahweh. And every all those boys down through their head, there was, there was a lot of meaning in a name. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. yep. <clears throat> it used to be like you had a lot of smiths. Because there was a lot of smiths. There was a, the <laughs> iron smith, and there was a copper smith. And there, there was a lot of people working with ores and stuff back in the day. That's why you ended up with so many smiths. You, your, your job went with your name. Well, why is that? <laughs> Because his job goes with his name. He's in the saving business, and he's into saving souls. That's what Yahshua means. Yahweh is salvation. Okay. All right, keep going there, because I, I do have somewhere where I want to go. I want to give somebody else some time, too. Um, and who shall they believe? Never mind. I need to reread that. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How are you going to hear this thing without a preacher? Mm -hmm. Now, you could try to shut, shut us up, but we see the importance of the, and we see the power in this gospel, you see. When Paul says in, in Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it's the power of Yahweh unto salvation. Dr. Henley said, not one little bit, neither are we. We're not ashamed of this gospel, and we know the power of, of salvation that's in it. You see, so we're going to just keep on preaching. That's all there is to it. 
like it or <laughs> like it or leave it. <laughs> you see, and that's what's happened. You know, it's really love it or leave it. You see, read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That's right. And this is a beautiful, you know, it might not look like, we don't look like nothing. You know what this thing looked like out in the wilderness? You see, it was covered with, with ram skins and badger skins dyed red. It didn't look like nothing. But guess what? In Exodus, you can talk about, it said, let them make me a sanctuary where I may dwell right among them. This was, yeah, you know, if you wanted to look at something where we're always looking out there at these wonderful churches, it's supposed to be God's house. This is what he, this is what he put up with Israel here. This was his house here. And it, <clears throat> and, and it was temporary. This was to show that how temporary the flesh really is. Because the things that were of the skin and hair that was on this was dissolved and it was replaced with a more permanent iron and stone up here. To show Yahshua's glorified body. That this, you know, and, and look at the world and how they've got the, their image of Jesus. He was a beautiful, blonde haired, blue eyed, Caucasian. He was a Jew. He was the dark skinned. He came from the Middle East. You see, it, in the book, it says there was no former comeliness about him that we would desire him. He wasn't a beautiful thing to look at. You see, but if you knew what the true beauty was, he was something beautiful to look yeah. at. <laughs> if you had the eye to see what you really want to see, he, he was beauty right. beyond what could be described. You see? But it, but it wasn't about the flesh. It wasn't about this wrapper. See how that was wrapped in skin and hair and those things? But this, it said that this was out shown the noonday sun. This was a glorified building, you see? overlaid with gold it was really something you see but even this is just a type it's just a shadow right. this had to be destroyed you see to show that the reality is is that he raised a spirit body you see and the promise or that <clears throat> earnest of our inheritance you see or the outpouring of the holy spirit is to show that you can have a body like you wanted to have now that's something to look forward to you see not being restricted to just flesh you see Okay, keep reading there. Uh, and bring glad tidings of good things. Mm -hmm. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. That's right. For Isaiah, I'm not sure what that is. Isaiah. Isaiah. Or Isaiah. Isaiah. Saith mm -hmm. Yahweh, who hath believed our report. Yep. And he, he, if you go back there in Isaiah, he says that. Uh, who had believed our report and whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? You see, and we can show you. Why don't we get that real quick? You were just referring to that there. That's uh, Isaiah. Where is that? 40. Who, who had believed our report? 53. 53. Thank you. Isaiah 53 and 1. Mm -hmm. Who hath believed our report? And whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? And to whom is the arm of and Yahweh And to revealed? whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Now, this is just something kind of cool to look at with the ages and dispensations I want to run through today, real quick. Because you've got these different uh, historical events that are happening down through your Bible. That are, see, see how the charts all line up? Here you've got an Adam all die, and you've got the first dispensation is the Adamic dispensation, you see? Well, your first plate on the on this elementary chart is with Adam and Eve. Now, what got them in trouble is that they were given a commandment in the day that thou touched thereof, you shall surely die. You see? And they and they disobeyed the commandment. Eve was deceived and she took and she gave to her husband. He takes up the fruit to willingly die for his bride. You see, which is showing you something about Yahshua and his bride, that he willingly died for his bride. You see, you see how the first Adam and the second Adam they lined right up? Well, so you've got touch here. They touched of that fruit. Well, who was the arm of Yahweh revealed? If you were to put an arm on here, you're going to see the operation of Yahweh be revealed right on your, on your own hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? So first of all, you had touch. Well, isn't that where you touch? Mm -hmm. They touched in the garden. You touch with your hand. Okay? The second thing that happened here, the second dispensation is with Noah or the Noahic dispensation. 
second plate on the elementary chart. Now, what you had here is Yahweh Elohim gives uh, Noah a vision that the end of all flesh has come before me at the death. You see, they get into that ark. That's a burial. You see, and it resurrects on the water to salvation. Now, there was eight souls that got in that boat. Okay, you have in your wrist. There's eight bones in your wrist, mm -hmm. one of which is called the scaphoid bone, which is boat shaped. That's right. Eight in the boat principle. Eight in the boat. You see the arm of Yahweh being revealed? You see? Yeah. Now, you come in here, you've got this third uh, dispensation, which is on here is the Melchizedek priesthood and Abrahamic promise. Okay? Third plate on the elementary chart. You see how beautiful these charts are? This, boy, this man had a vision revelation direct from the, the creator himself. And he didn't make this complicated. He didn't make it so we had to figure out some big mystery. This is a revelation. It's the, revealing the mysteries of mysteries. By a one, two, three pattern. It's, it's beyond. It's just beyond. Uh, Abraham is given a promise that in his seed all the nations will be blessed. There's a division between Jew and Gentile there. He has one son of a bondwoman, Ishmael, okay? That's Gentile nations. He has another son of, of Isaac, the son of the promise. That's going to be the, the Jew or the Israelites are going to come through that seed, okay? Well, <clears throat> you've got that right, right here on this chart, and within your arm, you have a division there. You have two bones, the, the radius and the ulna. There's two bones in your lower arm. Division of Jew and Gentile. Two bones in your arm. You see, are you seeing the arm of Yahweh being revealed? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's that's right. And you can do. It's a, it's a good point. You've got the, the even the the lengths of these ages go with the, the length of the arm. You had a, a, sh, a relatively short age here, and then you had a, lo a longer age here. Okay. So like relatively short, longer age here. Now. You've got, <laughs> you've got this uh, law being spoken down here from Mount Sinai, you see? And here, if you want to take, <clears throat> there's a couple of different um, divisions here to look at, but really you can run the legs too. So you can run the, who, the leg of Yahweh's revealed. You can go right up through <laughs> there with this too. But really what you've got is you've got Yahshua coming in, you see? And that's uh, Yahshua is his name, but he's also referred to in there as Emmanuel or Emmanuel or Elohim with us, you see. And he did bow his head and gave up the ghost, you see. That's an elbow right here at this division, okay. Mm -hmm. You've got elbow on your arm. El did bow. Now, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you come into the strength of things. This is where the strength of your arm is, you see. I don't know, th these things are... It's amazing how the things that are in your Bible are written right within you. You right. see, just what's that? Oh, and that's right. And it's also referred to as the humerus. You see this bone? You know, when you hit your elbow, you, it sends that shockwave up to the humerus. That's like righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit or humor. You see, that's right. Thank and you. One. What's that? And it's made one. The two are made one. That we talked about that. I talked about that middle wall partition. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. That that was eliminated, you see, by Yahshua coming in and fulfilling those things. So now you come into one. You've got one going up there. That's right. Thank you. Okay, keep reading there. Which one? Not, not in Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm, All right. I just want to pick up that quick point. Back to Hebrews. Right. And we were at... No, Romans. Darn. <laughs> we are in Hebrews. That's why Hebrews are... Hebrews tend to make no sense. All right. Romans... Or 10 and we're going to start at 16. Mm -hmm. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Right. For Isaiah saith Yahweh, who hath believed our report. Mm -hmm. So then faith cometh by hearing. See, this faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. That's why you want to get yourself down to class. You get yourself some faith. The, the founder said, come to class. Be on time. Be there. He meant, be there. Be there. Pay attention to the things that are going on. And that, sometimes that's hard. That's one of my main testimonies is being uh, being raised up in the schools when you're a kid. There's a lot of distractions going on. It's hard to pay attention sometimes, especially when you're wild like I was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So read. 
So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. See, faith cometh by hearing, and the hearing of the word of Yahweh. Read. But I say, have they not heard? Mm -hmm. Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth. See, and, see, and he, and you can pick this up too in the prophets. It, it, there, let's get it. Um, Psalms nineteen and one, please. It's just beautiful how these things all line up. You see, when, when he was talking about there's nothing new under the sun, it's true. Yahweh has, has laid this thing down in perfection, and he's just wrapping it up just that way, too. You see, and that's why, you know, on this chart, I was thinking about this the other day, this the simplicity of how that he divinely authorized this thing, and he's going to be the one that finished it. Because people are all worried about the turmoil in the world and stuff. You know, that, that, that's not going to finish it. I don't care how bad mankind messes that's things right. up. It's Yahweh that's going to wrap this thing up. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Divine vision, divine revelation. <laughs> he's the author. He's the finisher. You see? He's the beginning. He's the ending. He's the creator. He's the destroyer. You don't got to worry about man messing things up. I mean, it, it, it is a concern. Don't get me wrong. But you have some comfort down here to see that Yahweh's he's running the show. Always has, always going to be. Psalms 19. Thank you. One. And the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh. See, the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh. He don't need any help <laughs> declaring anything. He's got it covered. You don't need to erect some great edifice. He doesn't need a crystal cathedral. He doesn't need St. Peter's Basilica. They're wonderful buildings. I mean, the architecture and stuff is great. Great historical tour. Necessary to show the glory of Yahweh? Eh. Not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Read. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. That's right. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. See, day unto day uttereth speech. We've all seen the, a powerful witness in our lifetime, every day of our lives. You see, for the sun, it rises in the morning, very early in the morning. You see, it goes to its zenith, and it's it's hot when it's you know, I mean, you've had those days where it's like, you got to get out of the sun. It's so hot. See, seeing that he, and it shows that he's a consuming fire. And it, it very, you know, in the evening, it goes behind the horizon. And it, as it's going down, a lot of times it, it changes color. It goes orange to red, you see, showing that he went down a bloody mess. It's yeah. a witness, you see, and it's buried behind the earth. And you expect to see it resurrect in the morning again and again and again. Why? Because he's showing how that he's going to go through his death, his burial, and his resurrection according to the scriptures. Again, according to the creation. Again, again, and again. Because he's a great repeater. Read. There is no, no, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. This is a universal language around here. This, this death, burial, and resurrection, anybody can get it by this pattern. You see, right. you don't need to be fluent in any particular language or culture or anything like that. You can just get it by the preaching of this gospel. Read. Their line is gone out. Now, why is he? Why earth. does he use a line to go out? First of all, it's pretty amazing. This is always something that's amazed me about energy in, in general. Is that all energy is runs in waves, which is a three-part thing. You have a crest, you have a trough, and you have a midline. A wave is that just that simple, and all energy that's transmitted is transmitted in that, and that's how all this great technology is working. It's all waves, man. And I'll tell you, our microwave messes with some of our other waves. I, we probably should get that checked out. For some reason, you hit our microwave, and our Wi-Fi just you know, I don't like that. Apparently, <laughs> and I read about it, and I thought, well, maybe the the screen, you know, the the screen, it they actually let run on the same wavelength. They run on a two point four megahertz wavelength, and that's why. It, they screw with each other. <laughs> Waves, man. So, but it's it's a three-part thing. Why? Why is that? One, two, three. But you know what? It, the, the waves here, the radiation that we get from the sun works in that way, but it travels in straight lines. Straight lines. Light travels in a straight line. That's, that's really something. Read. And their line has gone out forth. Read. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Right. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. You see? He, it, it, it's a witness to show 
his source, the substance. He, they, all these things can come back to the generation here of Yahweh Elohim. It's showing how that he created all things according to the pattern of himself. That's a straight line, people. That's, that's showing you how that on the first day, you see, he divided the light from the darkness, you see? And you've got, <clears throat> well, I'm going to try to do it without the 40-plate chart on here, but you've got, uh, even within the days of creation, you've got those, those principles going forth there of a one, two, three pattern. You see, one, two, three pattern, one, two, three pattern. But even if you go through the days of the creation, he's got the dividing of light and darkness, you see. On the second day, he's got the waters rolled back. You see, but down here, coming out of your pattern, you've got death on the altar. You see, there's a division between light and dark. You had the sin, which was unto death, and then you've got an innocent sacrifice, which is unto life. That's a dividing of light and darkness. That's, right. That's on your first day. That's on your first um, vessel in your pattern, you see. The second vessel is your labor. There's a dividing of waters on the second day. There's a dividing of waters with your second vessel. The, the, um, the sacrifice is immersed in the water, and there was a dividing of waters. He divides the waters above the firmament from the waters below the firmament. Dividing of waters. Yeah. <laughs> the third day, the seed of vegetation springs forth. Do you know that the, the horn of holy oil, if you look at all those things, it all came from plants. Yeah, it all right. came from plants or Seed of vegetation. See, that's what those things. So your your third uh, vessel, as it were, you see that horn of holy oil go with the third day. Your fourth day, I, the the fourth day goes. The the um, sun, moon, and stars are um, hung. <laughs> that way, and I, oh man, I was just reading about the the hanging of the the curtains and stuff. There's even just in the curtains and the the rings and everything. There's just so much detail in here. It's just incredible. But you've got you've got that that light there. So you're going to have light in your tabernacle. You see, you're going to have the um, the the great fishes and the well. Really, you've got here is you've got um, the different uh, kingdoms. I would put it as coming forth because what's illustrated here is you've got. Um, the amphibian plane, yeah. you've got the great fish and um, whales coming forth, and then you've got these, the kings that were set up over them, or the, in the Elohim book, he talks about the ornithological, and um, what's the other one? It's, it's showing you the kings of the kingdoms, you yeah. see, those kings yeah. that were put upon there. And then on the sixth day, you've got man coming forth, you see, yeah. it, it's just a there's just so much. All right, I got to keep going because I don't want to get down here pretty soon. And then Psalms and the end. Um, yeah, finish in Psalms and then I want to go back over to Romans. Uh, Psalm 15 or 19 and 5, we're at, mm -hmm. which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber yeah. and rejoiceth as a strong man to run. So you race. see how he's, he, in him has he set a tabernacle for the sun as a bridegroom is coming forth. Now, <clears throat> We know the physical example of a bridegroom coming forth from his chain. He he's, comes as a strong man to run a race. You see, you can run parallels with this stuff all day. Go ahead and read. I'm sorry. I didn't want to get going on too much of this. but His going yes. forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. You see how it's a circuit? Look at these circles, how he comes forth. Yep. Kingdom of Elohim here. You see? You see how at the end? See how he declares the end right from the beginning? Kingdom of Elohim. But now look at it. He's got sons and daughters around. He's got these um, angels and the souls of man, you see, worship him in, in his glory. You see, but you see how it's a circuit? See how these things are. And <clears throat> I always love this because Dr. Kim would talk about that Yahweh's address is 888, eternity way. And if, when you lay this on its side, you've got 888, eternity yeah. way. That, that's his address right here. That's what he's been running. So mm -hmm. he operates in eternity. That's something to really look at. But uh, we... And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. There's nothing hid from the heat there. That, <clears throat> there ain't nothing that happens that Yahweh isn't aware of. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Read. 
The law of Yahweh is perfect. The law of Yahweh. Do you know of anything in this world that's perfect? Truly perfect? Besides what Yahweh has made? <laughs> Put his hand on his way. His works are perfect. Okay? The law of Yahweh is perfect. Read. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Read. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. That's right. Read. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. Mm -hmm. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. Yep. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. Yep. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. That's it's all really good stuff. I gotta go back over to <laughs> I gotta go back over to Romans. Here's your tonight. Romans 10 and where were we? 18. Mm -hmm. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Mm -hmm. really? But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by foolish nation I will anger you. Mm -hmm. Jump, where are you at? I'm at 19. There's okay. two more verses. Okay, that's that's good enough there. Okay. I want to go over to um, Hebrews real quick, and then I actually no. Um, give me um First Corinthians 15. I just want to go through this because it's talking about <clears throat> you know we went through there and said um, how are they going to hear without a preacher? You see, um, this thing needs to be preached. And what needs to be preached is the unadulterated gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And I say unadulterated because he was talking about how that this, you know, how anybody would get up off of this thing. And, and you know, the example is with if you took drinking water, okay, I don't care what your supply is. If you had a thousand gallons or a million gallons, if you took any amount of poison in there, it, it pollutes the whole thing. It's polluted the whole thing. You can't mix in your own thoughts, concepts, and opinions or only anything that concerning man into this gospel and have it be any good. It corrupts the whole thing. It pollutes it. And you don't want that. You don't want that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, yeah. which also you received and wherein you stand. Mm -hmm. By which also you are saved. You if, see how the, the, this this elementary chart is the chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. You see, now how is this set up? This pattern and plan of salvation. You see, because this is the good food that he was talking about that we want to come down here and partake of and to eat. His pattern and plan of salvation. You see, is how that the law and the testimony, testifying of Yahshua, go according to a threefold divine tabernacle pattern. In other words, a divine ordering of affairs right down through here. That's why you can see how that this divine ordering of affairs or through the dispensations and ages is being laid out or described. This is some good food. This is soul food that, that is being taught down here. Okay? Go ahead and finish that up. Um, where did I stop? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the glad tidings which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory. See, if you keep in memory these things, read, and that's a big little word, that, that if, and it's, I, I just was talking about this the other day, of how that, it really shows that how that Yahshua, see, he, he was the one that was instituting it back there with Israel, and he's fulfilled those things in the flesh, and there's still a spiritual fulfillment going on here with the outpouring of the Holy right. Spirit. You see, that's what this dove represents down here in the present kingdom age. You see, is that you have the opportunity through the preaching of the gospel to be a recipient of the Holy Spirit or to be a part of Yahshua's body or his bride. That, that's some good news. That That's beyond good. <laughs> I don't think good even... It, Sometimes we do struggle with words down here because, you know what I mean? We're going to go on to learn of Yahweh in ages to come. 
And one thing, and this has been reiterated a lot in the Zoom session, it's, it is something to think about. Is one thing we don't know anything about is learning about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua without a physical body, without this drag. You see? And I'm looking forward to it. Okay, read. <clears throat> By which also you are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. Right. And that's what he was preaching. He was pe preaching law and testimony, law and prophets. See? Yeah. That's what he was preaching. And if you go into Luke uh, 24, just keep your finger there, but give me Luke 24 and 25. Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe. This is Yahshua. And he said, O fools and slow of heart to believe. Read. All that the prophets have spoken. You should have believed what the prophets were talking about. Read. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter now into the Now that he goes on to say, you should have been listening to what the law and the prophets were saying. Because ought not the Messiah have to suffer these things? He suffered these things according to what was written. They were telling you what was to come. If you believe what their report, you wouldn't have been surprised at what was going on with me. Read. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. This is how he taught. Yes. This is where he went. And beginning at Moses. That's the law. Read. And all the prophets. He expounded upon. Go ahead. He expounded unto them in the, all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He expounded about the things concerning himself. That's what the law and the prophet, that's what your Bible's about. It's the, what thus saith Yahweh, and it's testifying of the salvation of Yahshua. The salvation is of Yahshua. You see? Okay. Back to Corinthians. I'm sorry. I'm... 15 and 2. By which also you are saved, can. if you keep in memory where it reads unto you. <laughs> Unless you have believed in vain. You don't want to believe this thing in vain. You don't want it to not mean something to make an effectual, to make an effect on you. You see? Read. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. See, he couldn't deliver anything unto you that he hadn't already received from himself. That's, that's how this thing works. Read. How that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. See, how that the Messiah, see, how Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures read and that he was buried how that he was buried and that he rose again and the then third he day. resurrected on very early morning on the third day you see read according to the scriptures. according it was all done according to the scriptures mm -hmm. so let me just go through here real quick and we're going to run this two different ways we're going to run death burial and resurrection first in simplicity of the gospel down to um down to this chart and then i'm going to also go in because we have this witness down through here uh, <clears throat> that's been provided, you see, by Yahweh, all down through here, running parallels with that death, burial, and resurrection. And if you pick up 1 John 5 and 7, you'll, you'll find out that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there's three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. And it's the, You see how on the chart it's the same one? It's a wit. That's because they go hand in hand. It's a witness that the of the unity of the spirit, and that's what these things are testifying of. That's how why it's a straight line. That's how <laughs> why their line has gone out, and it's gonna and it's gonna continue on right. from the beginning to the end, and it's gonna go unimpeded, whether whoever likes it or whoever who doesn't love it or leave it. Okay, so with Adam. He, when they touch of that fruit, they die instantaneous in their conscience. And that death is represented down here that he died 70 days short of that one day with Yahweh. Because these verses on here, if you check them out sometime, <clears throat> Psalms 19, 4 and 2 Peter 3 and 8. 2 Peter 3 and 8 says, be not ignorant that one day with Yahweh is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. That's right. Okay, So we're talking about prophetic time down here. Therefore, when Adam dies, that's what uh, Genesis 5 and 5 is, and all the, the years of Adam's life were 930 years, and he died. He died in that prophetic day, just that's the right. way Yahweh said. Now, Yahweh cannot lie. You see, that's a death. You see, and that death passed upon all mankind, and it passed upon the four corners of the earth down here. You see, they were ignorant of their creator. They, they even though... Even for them that died not after the similitude of Adam's transgression, you still inherited that death. That's a that's a that's a long reign of death. Mm -hmm. You see, death. They were buried in that work. It says right here by the sweat of his face. You see, he had to 
toil in the land at the burial, you see. But through childbearing, you're, they were told, well, you can take it up in first, or, yeah, first Timothy 2.13 here, that through childbearing they would be saved. Why? Because they were such a great <laughs> childbearer? No, because one Yahshua would come through the generations, you see. That, that, that true promised seed that Isaac was a type of is Yahshua. He's the one that's salvation unto all those who believe. You see, that's a death, burial, and resurrection we end. Noah, I talked about how Noah was given a vision that all the end of all flesh has come before me. That's a death, you see. <clears throat> they were buried in that ark, you see, and it resurrected on the waters. You see, that's a death, a burial, and a resurrection, you see. Here with Abraham. He's told to offer up his only son, and he's going to be obedient to the things that Yahweh has told him. So you got Isaac dead and buried in Abraham's old mind, you see? But he is confident that Yahweh is salvation, even though he doesn't know the name back there or anything. The principle runs strong through the whole thing. Yet, yet there's never been a time where Yahshua is not present, regardless of where, where you're running in the purpose, you see? <clears throat> but Yahweh, Yahshua is still manifest back here because he, Abraham is confident that Yahweh will provide a sacrifice. And a ram is caught by his horns in the thicket, and the angel stays his hand. And that ram is offered up instead of Isaac. That's a death, a burial, and a resurrection with Isaac. <clears throat> with Abraham and Isaac. With this migratory pattern, the children of Israel, they're in hard bondage. This whole bottom section down here, all these different things that are happening, this, the, the chaotic state that the earth was in, this chaotic state that the ark was in. You see, you've got this, well, this is really a, a little lit, light in the chaos because this is Yahshua's tent down there. That's you right. see, because there's always a little light. <laughs> there's always a little spark, no matter how dark it gets. Yahshua, That's right. <sighs> there's a lot to, to talk about. Uh, down here, even Egypt even means black, and they were in hard bondage, you see. But they were told for that death angel to pass over, you see, and for them to come up out of Egypt, that, that they had to take out that land, you see. We've got the death of the land, you see. They were buried in the waters of that, uh, buried in the part of waters of the Red Sea. That's a burial or an immersion. You picked that up in First Corinthians, how that, that you shouldn't be ignorant of how all our fathers passed through the cloud and through the sea and all were baptized under Moses. <clears throat> okay, death, burial, and they resurrected into the wilderness to, to worship Yahweh. That's a death, burial, and resurrection. Right out of your tabernacle, you've got death on the altar, burial in the labor, resurrection with the horn of holy anointing oil, representing the spirit on the priest so that he could officiate within, this, with, within the tabernacle. You see? Yahshua, when he comes on the scene, when he enters his bat, or enters into his ministry, and he's got his baptism being illustrated here, <clears throat> John points him out as the Lamb of Yahweh. When you looked at the Lamb of Yah back here, when you saw what was happening with the Lamb back here, when you saw what happened with this Ram or this Lamb back here, you can expect there to be a death on him. That's a death sentence on him. That's a death, you see. John uh, immerses him or baptizes him in the Jordan here. That's a burial. That's a death. That's a burial. And he resurrects into the wilderness here, and he's, <clears throat> it's a death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Down here with Yahshua, he goes through his death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures, you see? Now, <clears throat> I told you I was going to run these parallels here. I'm going to run a few other principles, and then I'm going to have my seat. Um, I talked about 1 John 5 and 7, that there are three that bear witness. You see the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And there's also a principle 40 in here. And if you want to go on, because really, the pattern is, is threefold. You have three compartments in your body. You have three compartments to the, uh, or three um, sections of your body, three compartments to the tabernacle. But there's also steps involved here. You've got the first step being the gate. You've got the second step being the altar. The third step is the labor. The fourth step is the door. The fifth step is the entire holy place. The sixth step is the second veil. And the seventh step is the most holy place, okay? And seven denotes perfection, okay? And then you have, remember who we were talking about that circuit, his, <clears throat> his address being 888 Eternity Way. That's, that's eight, eight 
is also the sign on its side for infinity. Infinity on its side. You see how he's laid his, laid himself down right from the get go throughout eternity. You know, at that when when he talks about it being an everlasting gospel, there you go. <laughs> he doesn't change. Okay, so you've got a lot of things that, that can go through with those steps, too. So I, what I want to bring in is the 40s, because Dr. Taylor would call that a token. And a token is something you hold on to. It's, it's precious. And we, we hold these things yeah. precious. Don't That's right. So with Adam and Eve, blood passed upon the uh, four corners of the earth by Adam's death, you see? By the sweat of his face, that's showing you water. So that's blood. That's water, okay? Now, spirit, you've had Michael staying that way so they could enter not back into the garden. That's blood, water, spirit. You see? Now, 40, I'll just run this real quick because it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool thing to see how that according to Moses' vision, and this is according to Moses' vision. You wouldn't get this any other way but by a divine vision. By according to Moses' vision back here, you can show how that, that in principle that they were back here for 40 days in the garden perfect peace you see because really time had not started this is something mom was just talking about how that you see how you have this this garden of eden mm -hmm. it's on this it's on the creative side here yeah. that time didn't start until they came out of the garden that's why the sun come right down with them you've got the son of yahweh and that sun coming right down together <laughs> just like just like when yash was on the cross you see as that as this sun is going down or he's giving up the spirit, as it were, that's it turns pitch black dark at noon, from, from noon till three o'clock. And Dr. Terry Welch was just talking about this in one of the lectures I was reading. This is pretty, this is cool stuff. <clears throat> you know, Joshua and the prophets, he says, stand still. Uh, the moon, he has the moon stand still and the sun stand still. And he, he illustrated it like this. And he was showing how that was the fulfillment of Joshua getting up on the cross. And the same thing is going on there. No other, and it says right in the book, and no other time as the, as, as the um, son hearkened unto the voice of a man. Yep. You see? Why? Because it's the same man. It's the, he's, the, he's the only, he's the man. You don't want to talk about the proverbial, he's the man. No, nope, Joshua's the man. The only, and he, he's not a man. But, you know what I'm saying? He's the man. Okay, anyways. I, uh, okay, 40 days and 40 nights. So, <clears throat> On the, the first principal trip that Moses takes up on the mount, he he's given instructions to come down and tell the, the children of Israel to wash up, and then he's going to speak the uh, the commandment down. Okay, that actually you don't need that to show the forty days. The second trip you can pick up in uh, Exodus twenty four, and we we show twenty four and sixteen is really where the Genesis belongs, right there, where you've got in the cloud. Uh, the glory of Yahweh covered the mount and the, the cloud covered it six days, colon, and then all of a sudden the seventh day comes up. Well, your six days, that's where your creation, that's where your Genesis should be, okay? Down to Genesis 2, which is actually where he gets a repeat of the, the, uh, the creation. And you can, basically, Dr. Kinley says that he's filling in the gaps, the things that Moses' finite mind didn't absorb the first time. He's given him a repeat. This thing's a great repeat on, on the third trip. So anyways, the second trip, he sees the days of creation down to Adam, and he sees Adam and Eve at, at, um, in a peaceful, restful state, and Yahweh, Elohim, rests on the seventh day. And then he sees 33 days. So you've got them at rest, seven, and then you've got 33 days where he shows him the tabernacle, which is an awesome witness to show how that Yahshua was tabernacling in the flesh for 33 years. 33 days, tabernacle tabernacling for 33 years so <clears throat> you've got you've got adam and eve for 33 uh days at rest in the garden he did not see the transgression here that's a key thing to to understand because when he comes down from that second trip yashua shows him i hear a noise of war in the camp they had built this golden calf moses says oh no they're just they're partying they're having a good time we're glad to be out of egypt yeah they're having a good time all right and they were giving credit to a golden calf one of the, they're, they're breaking a bunch of the Big Ten right off the bat. So Moses recognizes what's going on. He whacks hot. He throws down the law, showing that they weren't going to be able to keep that old law. 
they weren't going to be able to keep that first law that was given to them. That's a representation there. So Moses goes back up with a, a, a heart or a, a stone um, fashioned like unto the first, but it shows how that Moses brings his own heart, showing that that new covenant is going to be written in the heart and mind of mankind. Okay? So he brings that up. And so now he gets a repeat of the, the creation. Now he sees them transgress in the garden after that next seven days. So you take the 33 days from the first where they're at rest. Then you take those seven days from the third trip. Now he sees the transgression. That's your 40 days according to Moses' vision. So anyway, I know it's a, a long explanation, but these you wouldn't know anything about these things by just picking up your Bible and figure this out. That you know this came by divine vision revelation. And we wouldn't have known anything if we hadn't sat down in these classes and listened and Yashua had shown us something. Okay? So that's blood, water, spirit, 40 with Adam. Here, <clears throat> uh, let's let's get it because we don't always get it. But Ezekiel 33, start at 4. Because <clears throat> really, you could say that Noah was a watchman and you could just leave it there. But we're watchmen too. You When you... <clears throat> you know of the impending wrath of Yahweh to come. It's an obligation to put the put the people's feet to the fire. You see, you want people to know this so bad. You really do. Ezekiel 33 and 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Right, read. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Yeah, so the, Noah is as a watchman back here. He's he's told to warn the people. You see, and it says the wicked warn back here. He got the blood off of his head and he put the blood on their heads. A lot of times you'll actually have an illustration. You'll see the blood on their heads on this chart. That's blood on the people's head. By preaching the truth, the truth was that salvation was to get in the ark back here. That's blood. Quite obviously, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That's some water. So you got blood. You got water. You see, and it talks about how the, the spirit um, seals this ark, you see, or closed the door. That's blood, water, spirit. And it, the 40 is the 40 days and 40 nights that it rained. That's blood, water, spirit, 40 with Noah. Here with Abraham and Isaac, You've got that offer, that lamb that was being offered up, it was killed. That's blood. You see, when they were coming up here, he was an old man, and they came up a mountain with, you know, bundle of wood and so on and so forth. You see, he would have had some sweat and tears there. That's blood. That's water. And that spirit is that angel stay in his hand. Now, at that at the time of this, um, Abraham or Isaac was not like a little boy, like sometimes we imagine, be like an eight-year-old kid he was going to offer up. He was 25 years old. He could have overpowered Abraham, but he's, he's a representative of the son being a willing sacrifice, or Yahshua offering himself up, you see, unto the Father. Just like here in the example, you see, he's a willing sacrifice. He, he, he opened not his mouth, just like here. He's as a, a sheep dumb to the shear. And, and they... <laughs> They're noisy when they want to eat, but they don't give up a fuss when someone comes to put them away. Put it that way. There is a nature about a lamb that's not like other animals. The pigs are squealing. <laughs> I mean, you never heard nothing like just even grabbing a, a pig by the leg is this They're not like that. They just go dumb. You know, it's it's a it's a shows you a nature. It's a willing sacrifice. That's blood. There was water with the sweat and tears. That angel stays his hand. And oh, I need to finish up here. So uh, Isaac is 25. Ishmael at that time would have been 40 years old because he was 15 years older yep. than Isaac. And you can get the, you know, take some time, read, read in your book of uh, Genesis, you'll find these things out. Okay. So migratory pattern. You've got uh, the blood of the lambs put on, and you got four points of blood here uh, on the two side posts, the upper door posts, and dipping from the basin. That's four points of blood. They go through the parted waters of the Red Sea. That's water. They were led by that spirit in the cloud. You see, that's blood, water, spirit, and they were out here for 40 years because of their disobedience. It says in the book that it would have been 40 days if they believed the true report, but it was 40 years. You see? 
in all right out of your tabernacle you've got blood on the four horns you've got that water in the labor you've got spirit being signified by that the anointing of the of the priest you see or that oil and there's 40 steps here in your holy place that's blood water spirit 40. you see you've got him being pointed out as a lamb he's going to have that blood on him you see he's baptized by john in the river jordan that's water and john sees that spirit descending on him as a dove that's spirit and he tarries out here for 40 days <clears throat> coming down here to uh, Joshua, his, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. You've got him being, he's a bloody mess. It talks about in the book that his visage was marred beyond recognition. You could not recognize him, they beat him so bad. Okay? That's a bloody mess. And, and on top of that, you've got him being uh, nailed in his two hands, his feet, and that crown of thorns being pressed on him. That's four points of blood, fulfilling that four points of blood back here, fulfilling the four points of blood on the altar. You've got, <clears throat> after he gives up the ghost, the centurion comes to him, sees that the one on his left and his right are dead, or, or breaks the legs of his, the ones that are uh, on his right and his left. Yeah. Yeah. But seeing that Yahshua is already dead, it pierces him in the side, and out forth comes blood and water, that blood, that's water, and he raises a quickening spirit. He doesn't raise no physical body. He raises a quickening spirit. That's death, burial, and resurrection, you see? And then don't forget about the ascension, you see? And he, <clears throat> and then he makes spiritual appearance for 40 days, you see? And those, this was talked about today quite a bit, about those souls in the altar. You see, there's a principle, you see, of them, and they were... <laughs> It's a principle. It was, they weren't physically in a, an altar someplace. That's not what we're talking about. But there's a, a, a principle of a, an intercession here. And that's what Yahshua, you see, those are those souls that were waiting. They're waiting for that true intercessor, you see, to pick them up. And that's what he went and he, when it says he preached to the captives, it was those that were that were that were in wait and they believed the true report and they were with they were with him in his resurrection he him being the first fruits and them who who slept you see and he made spiritual appearances for 40 days that's blood water spirit 40. now here with the uh, pentecost of the believing jews you've got them looking back at this last supper you see in joshua washing the disciples feet <clears throat> when he says take this take eat this is my body you see and, and he said, drink this, and this is my blood. Now, here's another one. They've taken this one verse, and they've made a whole doctrine out of it That's right. around a carnal mind, and, and not understanding the English language either, the difference between this and that. Mm -hmm. You see? <laughs> it's just that simple. But then they, re with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they recognized that he was preparing them. He was showing them that he is that lamb. He's going to come in and fulfill this thing. This, this is my body given for you. That's that's going to be some, that represents some, some blood. You see, he washed the, the disciples' feet in water. We talked about how that that's, there is a, one of the, one of the greatest, my mom always said there's always one good line in whatever movie or whatever show you, you watch. Well, there's a lot of them in that Bruce Almighty. And one of the best ones is, is <clears throat> when he goes up, you know, well, he's, first of all, he's the janitor, yeah. right? And he tells them that there isn't anything so dirty that it can't be cleaned up. And yeah. you see, if you ever notice how they're walk, they're cleaning that floor, it's line upon line, <laughs> line upon line. They're going back and forth, back and forth. And then when the bot, when he goes up, he says, "Oh, the boss will be right back." <laughs> he just comes back and he's just changed his clothes. That's all. That, that's all he did. It was just the boss. He went up and he just changed his clothes. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, when Dr. Kinley said he wanted to get this thing in the movies. I thought, oh, really, I'd really like to see this thing in the movie, you know, yeah. like this vision and revelation. But he, he's been doing it all along. It's, yeah. Every movie's got a, a good principle yeah. in it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> so he washes the disciples' feet, showing that, that their soul could be washed off. You see, that's where the, the man needed to be cleaned up, pertaining to his conscience. See, and by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So that's blood, water, spirit. You see? And, uh, um, for this, this brought it well, yeah, it, it ushered in the, the fourth age. You see, okay, so that's blood, water, spirit, 440. Here with the persecution plate, you've got Stephen here in the book of Acts, he's being stoned. You see, and it's 
he's being stoned by it for his testimony. You see, and it talks about how that, you know, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta get down. Uh, blood with uh, him being stoned. Water is um, Philip uh, baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. You see, and this outpouring of the Holy Spirit um, is happening through the, for, for the Jews through this persecution. You see, with the Gentiles' conversion, you've got James being beheaded um, with the sword here. That's blood. Um, uh, is it Paul? No, oh, Peter. Peter says, can any man forbade water? You see, and then and Yahshua brings back his, his remembrance that it's not by water, but by the preaching of the uh, gospel, and it's going to be with the Holy Spirit, with fire. Yep. That's, that's what you're going to be baptized in. That's blood, water, spirit on the believing Gentiles, you see, here. And I don't know what the 40 is there. And <laughs> there's a lot to talk about down here. And um, all honor and praise going to Yahweh, um, Elohim, Yahshua. Um, hallelujah. Uh, for final speaker, I'd like to call upon the Dean of our Fort Branch, Dr. Bonnie Snyder. Happy and glad to be here. I'm glad that we had a class today and that our company came with us. And uh, 20 minutes, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I just want to point out a couple things on the chart about the resurrection. Because, you know, we say things like death, burial, resurrection. And uh, when I was looking at some of the other things on the chart, I was looking at how that it's on here, death burial, resurrection. And um, I want to read some stuff, and I may have already done this with, with our own class. I don't know. I can't remember anymore what I've done, what I haven't done. So let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter, and start at 1, and Luke, the 24th chapter. And we'll just read some of this stuff about the day that Yahshua the Messiah resurrected. Because... You know, we know it, and we've heard these things, but we haven't read it a lot. At least, we don't, it's something that we don't read a lot in the classes. And sometimes it's just good to recognize where it comes from out of the Bible, what you're doing. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is when you have, you know, if, you, if you're looking to uh, teach off the charts, when you have resurrection right here, you have resurrection right here, you have resurrection right here, because that's a line right there showing you resurrection. So every place that you have this line here, and it comes right from the tabernacle pattern because, you know, we got the priest over here just so you can see it. But he was really anointed at the door right here. Yep, that's right. And when that anointing came upon him, let's hit, uh, uh, what is it, Psalms 133? <clears throat> See, the priest had to be anointed back here before he could minister in this tabernacle. And you know what? Also in this tabernacle, all the vessels were anointed. In other words, the spear was influencing what went on here in the tabernacle. You understand that's what anointing is? That, that holy anointing oil was a type and a shadow. In fact, everything in the tabernacle was a type and a shadow of what Yahshua was going to do. You understand? In you. Mm -hmm. And so this holy anointing oil represented that the Holy Spirit now is going to cause this thing to operate exactly the way it's supposed to. All right, read that, please. Psalm 133 and 1. Uh -huh. behold, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh -huh. How good and how, how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And I just want to say this. You know, if you read transcripts and you listen to the tapes that we got now, the tapes are good now. So you can listen to them without too much trouble. Uh, Dr. Kinley did say that he wanted everybody to do, that he not wanted everybody, but that he was happy that everybody in the school taught the same thing. That's unified, right? And so the things that are taught, if you if you teach what's on the chart and you get your verses out of the Bible, it's gonna it's gonna amount up to the same thing. 
if that's how everybody in every class is teaching, you see. And really what you're doing is, see, and this is something that's so important to recognize when you're looking at these charts. This, see right here, let's get John one and one. I'd hate to have a class without John one and one, right? <laughs> John 1 and 1. Uh -huh. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word. Now, in the beginning was the Word. And I'll tell you right now, we know what the Word is down here. That's right. Yeah. Let's go to um, Jeremiah 30, verse 1. See, it was the Word of Yahweh that came unto Moses. It was the Word of Yahweh that came unto John on the Isle of Patmos. And the Word of Yahweh is the one that came to Dr. Kinley and showed him this vision. And it's Yahweh Elohim himself. You understand that? Yep. It's not in all our life. See, before we came to class, we thought this was the word. Well, this is the word of God. And the preachers told you that. <laughs> you understand? But this is not the word of God. This is the words of Yahweh written down. There's a big difference. That's right. See? And did this word fly to Jeremiah? See, did that book? <laughs> See, that's not how it happened. See, this is the word of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See? Yahweh is pure spirit. He takes on a super incorporeal shape and form. That's the word of son. And then he comes right down as the, the Holy Spirit. But he comes down the physical body, especially prepared body. All right? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. Now that was good and pleasant for him to do all together in the unity. Read on. <laughs> Jeremiah 31. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh saying. Okay, so the word the word came unto Jeremiah. So this could be Jeremiah here. So the word came unto Jeremiah. And that's really how your whole book is put together. Moses is having a vision, and Yahweh tells him what to write down in the book, and he writes it down. He's responsible for writing five books, right? John on the Isle of Patmos, guess how many books he wrote? Five books. <clears throat> Yahweh told him what to write and what not to write. Do you know he told him what not to write? Yeah. He saw the days of creation. He said, don't write it, because Moses already wrote it. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. See? So he told them what to write, told them what to write. He told Jeremiah what to write. He told Isaiah what to write. All right, give me one more verse on this. Um, Second Peter 1. And then we'll go back to John 1. 1. Second Peter 1. 1. Mm -hmm. Second Peter 1, 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that and no I always have to point this out. You know, it's very important to know where we are in time. And without this vision and revelation, we didn't even know there was ages. We didn't know there was dispensations. We didn't know there was a division between here and here. We didn't know any of this stuff, right? So it's important to recognize the way Yahweh set these things up. So knowing this first, Peter's writing. He receives the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So it's right in the beginning of the self-same age that we're in right now. So the things that are taught here are going to be taught till the end of the age. You understand that? Yeah. These things are going to, this is the self-same age that we're in right now is when Peter is making this statement. See? And that's something you want to remember. And sometimes when they're writing here, the, the, the prophets, they'd say, and it shall be. And that's one of the things, let's get this one verse. Here we are, Justin. Get me um, Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, 14. Uh -huh. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. All right, now all this the is world. Joshua the Messiah talking. And he's talking to his apostles right at the, right at the end of this age. But he's saying, and this gospel of the kingdom, it shall be preached. Yep. He didn't say that gospel is being preached right now. See, although right. it was. But he's saying, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached yep. in all this age for a witness. Do you understand that? So it's futuristic in that verse. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you need to know who he's talking to, where he's talking, when he's talking. 
why he's talking about he's talking you understand you know, these things and they're easy to see if you go by the charts it's really expands your understanding if you look at the charts once in a while all right so anyway um go back to where you were there uh, second peter 1 and 20. Uh -huh. knowing this first that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation so no prophecy and prophecy means teaching so no teaching of the scriptures, no teaching of the law, no teaching of the testimony, no teaching of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Pauline epistles, Peter epistles, what Revelation is. None of that came by the will of man. Read. No prophecy of the scripture. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. See, in old time, back here in this these two ages, they came not in old time by the will of man. When they prophesied, it was Yahweh. And they even wrote it down that way. Every verse that Moses writes, or I mean, every, every book that he writes back there, thus saith Yahweh. Yahweh said unto me, thus saith Yahweh. Same thing with Jeremiah. You know the verses that we get all the time, we need to think about some of these things. And listen to the way that he said things. Jeremiah 31, 31, what's it say? Behold, the days come, saith Jeremiah. No. 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 Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand? See? And even here, and even, even when you got the scripture today in uh, Psalms, let's go back there. What does that, that say? Psalms 19 and 1. Because these, it's important. It's really important for you to grasp this fact that this whole book was put together by Yahweh and not a man. Not a man. Mm -hmm. That's how it could be a documented witness. Could you have a witness if it was written by a man? Could you use it as a witness? No. See what I mean? What do you have there? Psalm 19 1. Uh -huh. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh Elohim. So even the creation out there was written by Yahweh. The body that you have on, these things were written by Yahweh. See? And the proof that it was written by Yahweh, <laughs> the first thing you come out of your mother's womb, you take in the great name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. The first thing that the first things that happens to you once you're alive. <gasps> Isn't that right? And that's what you're waiting to hear for when you're having a child. See? <gasps> first thing. It is showing you that he put these things together to show you who he is. He knows who he is. He didn't put them together for him. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. All right, keep reading. And oh, go, no, go to John. John. John 1 1. Yep. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. So, in the beginning was the Word, this Word was with Yahweh, and it was Yahweh. Yahweh Himself takes on a super incorporeal shape and form. And this is how you know. See? He manifests in a super incorporeal shape and form, and he creates the creation according to the pattern of himself. And that's how you know who it is. He's made everything according to his own pattern. This is him. He is the archetype or the original pattern of the whole universe. You understand that? I know these are things you've heard before. This is what's on my mind. <laughs> All right. You just have to go with what Yahshua gives you, even though you got something you thought you ought to. Anyway, so you have Yahweh coming into that super incorporeal shape and form, and then he comes right down in a fleshly body. Go ahead and read just through three and then read that. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Uh -huh. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. Without him. Spirit in the shape and form. All things were made by him. That makes him the creator. You understand that? Read. 
And without him was not anything made that was made. That's right. Without the pattern was not anything made that was made. Without Yahshua was not anything that was made that was made. Because this, this, and this are one spirit. This is spirit one. Spirit two, spirit three. But when you're talking about Yahshua, even though you know he had a specially prepared body, you're really talking about the spirit. Yeah. See? Could just a man, could, could any man get up and say to a sea that's raging, peace be still, and it just calms right on down? Could any man do that thing? No. So what was it? It was the spirit that created it. Say it to him. You know what? See, you ought to calm yourself down. You see what I mean? Yep. See? And that was the difference between him and us. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> All right, so keep reading. 14 verse. Uh -huh. And the word was made flesh. So the self-same word was made flesh or took on that specially prepared sacrificial body. See? The word was made flesh and dwell among us. See? And they beheld his glory back there. See, so these three are one. And I just want to say this: you know, you got Yahweh Elohim being the archetype, original pattern of the universe. And you know how he's the pattern is threefold: most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. See, when he comes in, there's three things that he made. Do you you understand? There was only three things that he made specifications to make. That's the ark back here. He gave the specifications to make the ark, the tabernacle, see, and the temple back here. Uh, ark, tabernacle, temple. Mm -hmm. And that's threefold. Yeah. You understand? And how about this? Yahweh, in his, in his creative motion, when he starts creating the creation, he's got in his mind what his purpose is. When he steps into shape and form, he's got a purpose right there. Yeah. See, just like when you step your feet up on, on your, in, out of bed in the morning, you got, okay, it's a work day. Okay, your purpose is I'm going to work, you see? Or today is a Saturday, I'm not going to work. My purpose is to relax today. You understand you got an idea yeah. of what you're doing. Well, look it, he's three, just like he's, Spirit, Yahweh in shape and form, and then Yahweh as Savior. He is a creator. He's the creator. He's the archetype original pattern of the universe. He created everything according to the pattern of himself. He's the creator. That's one. He's the Savior. That's two. And when he goes through his death, burial, resurrection, and pours out that Holy Spirit. Where does he pour out the Holy Spirit? Well, if you look at the chart, he pours out his Holy Spirit in your heart and in your mind. See how you're right here? He poured out the Holy Spirit, poured out the Holy Spirit, and right here it says that the New Testament is going to be written in your heart and in your mind, and this heart shows that. See? So what has he done? He's king sitting in your heart and mind. So he's the, the creator. And we didn't know that he was the creator. Did you ever think Jesus was the creator? No. Well, Jesus wasn't the creator. <laughs> but you see, you just didn't ever put these things together. See? That's right. And it's through this divine vision and revelation that these things are actually put together. How he's creator, created the creation according to the pattern of himself, he came in as the Savior, and it's still according to the pattern. You see? Because don't you know where you get your, your uh, principles of death, burial, and resurrection from? That's the pattern of him. Before he even came in and went down to die as, as the Savior, it was dictated by the pattern that there was going to be a death. That's all about him. Do you understand that? That's that death. That's that burial. That's that resurrection. See, I didn't talk about the resurrection much today. <laughs> That's what I was going to talk about. All right. <laughs> so anyway, you got those, those three things, see. And even when he's sitting as king, that's a pattern. It's a pattern that he's going by. And that's, it's the pattern is really the guide that you're looking at. 
And that's how we start out saying that you got this guy to look, you've got the pattern to look at. You understand? It's the pattern of him. It's how he made everything. He's the artiller. He's the original pattern of the whole universe. And just look at this. We're almost out of time. So just look at this. Because <laughs> this is wonderful to think about. Every single thing that you look at in the creation is a gas, a liquid, or a solid. That's right. You know why? Because it goes by the pattern of him. A gas state, is it just about invisible? Yep. Yeah, you can't see gas. See? A liquid, does it take on the shape and form of the vessel that it's in? Yes, it does. See? Yep. And how about a solid? Can you grasp that? Just like that's Yahweh, Ellen, and Yahweh. And that's what that shows for. And then you go to a, 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 an atom, and that's a proton and a neutron and an electron. Every single thing that you've ever seen made up, everything that came through the uh, from the creative state into the creation is made up of atoms. And atoms all go by that self-same pattern. Proton, neutron, and electron. See? Now the 92nd atom, the proton is invisible, which shows you just they, they've never been able to find it. They say they see two. You know that? The hydrogen atom? All right. Anyway, it shows you the invisible Yahweh. Okay. So then in the in the cell, you got a nucleolus, a nucleus, and a cell body. And that's how you're made up. And every cell of your body is made up just that way. We're made by a pattern, folks. And we live by a pattern. And, and we see this great pattern run over and over and over through these things that Yahweh has set up. And he said a lot of things in your Bible. But there's certain things that you put on the charts. Yeah. Yeah. See? And those are the things that really show him up. They show him for all it is. That's the vision that they had. Moses saw the vision. John saw the vision. Dr. Kim saw the vision. All your prophets saw the vision. And if you see the vision, you're not going to be saying something opposite of what they say. Right? Right. <laughs> see? So with those few words of encouragement, I hope somebody gets something out of that. <coughs> Um, on behalf of the Arkport branch, I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us today and um, encourage everybody to join us tomorrow. Where we're going to have class again from 10 a.m. till noon. All are welcome. Um, we all rise for the doxology. <clears throat> doxology is taken from the last two verses from the book of Jude. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua Messiah, our Sovereign. Long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all.